trauma produces brain injury. And this is commonly talked about as traumatic brain injury or TBI. This is at, uh, at alarmingly high um, incidence these days. So let's, let's talk about why traumatic, what is traumatic brain injury and why is it a problem? Traumatic brain injury comes from the acceleration of the brain within the cranium. And, and, and you don't have to hit your head to have an accelerating brain. So for example, there is a high incidence of, uh, uh, of um, traumatic brain injury in female hockey players. And this was surprising initially because, in fact, female hockey players don't check to the head. There's no checking to the head at all. So how, why are they having such a high incidence of traumatic brain injury if they're not even knocking their heads? Well, the answer is because they check to the body and checking to the body causes a, a, an acceleration of the head. Any acceleration of the head, you don't have to have contact between your head and any other object. You just have to have acceleration of the head. So that is enough to produce a traumatic brain injury. There are two types of accelerations that we worry about here. One is linear acceleration and the other is, is angular acceleration. In general, linear acceleration is, is problematic, but less problematic than angular acceleration. Why? Because linear acceleration uh, produces, produces a force uh, that, that, that um, it is along one line, uh, one uh, axis, but rotational goes, does this kind of deal. And what rotational acceleration or angular acceleration does is it tends to rip the long uh, distance fibers. It tends to either break them because they're rotated or it tears the myelin off of them, which is to say that in either case, you have a long distance fiber that is no longer working. Will it work in the future? It might or it might not. So um, it should also be noticed uh, or noted that um, helmets, which are used in some sports such as uh, American football, protect against linear acceleration, but do not protect against uh, angular acceleration. So if the, if the head rotates, there's nothing that the helmet can do about that. There is a uh, custom in medicine of calling these traumatic brain injuries concussions. Now, the original definition of a concussion is a blow to the head, which we already know is, is not uh, a requirement for traumatic brain injury, and a transient uh, uh, dysfunction. And the truth of the matter is that we don't know uh, how long uh, the effects of a traumatic brain injury will last. We don't know how long uh, Susie will have the effects of a traumatic brain injury or Joe or anybody. Um, they could have two different traumatic brain injuries, recover from one, not recover from the other. Two individuals could have exactly the same injury. One recovers, one doesn't. Another, one, another person with exactly the same injury uh, looks initially fine and 10 years down the road has, uh, the, ha shows effects of um, the brain injury. Now, in the past, when I started teaching uh, medical school back in 90, 1993, uh, I used to talk about what's called dementia pugilistica. And this was a, uh, a, a problem that, that happened, as, it, as the name suggests, in fighters, boxers. And these individuals showed a, um, a, a real um, degradation in cognitive function. Sometimes there was Parkinson's, sometimes there was just cognitive decline. What was found out in, or what was discovered and, and, and brought to light by Bennett Amalu in the noughts, 2000s, uh, is that in fact, uh, the um, traumatic brain injury can give rise to a, a what's called um, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And it's not just fighters, and it's not just uh, sports players, it's, or football player, American football players, it's soccer players, uh, American soccer players, it's um, cyclists who get 
thrown off their bikes. It's people walking around and having things fall on their heads by a pure stroke of bad luck. So there are a lot of reasons that give rise to a traumatic brain injury, car crashes, et cetera. Um, and the, the, the natural history of these traumatic brain injuries is, is, un, is still unclear. We do not know why one traumatic brain, brain injury is resolved and another one it, it causes months and months of problems and a, and a third one causes, uh, accumulates damage. What we do know from studies at BU led by Ann McKee and her colleagues is that the incidence of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which, is di which can be diagnosed pi pathologically after death, um, is very high in professional football players. It is seen quite frequently in college football players, and it is even seen in about a quarter of the uh, high school players examined. That said, we don't really know, we don't have a great control group in that, um, in, in that study. Uh, we don't really have a lot of, uh, of people who haven't played football, and, et, et cetera. So we don't really know what's the increased risk uh, of any given activity. But the incidence of chr chronic traumatic encephalopathy appears to be in the 90 to 95% range for, for professional fo American football players. Tra trauma to the head, uh, traumatic brain injury, is a preferred term over concussion, in my opinion. And I, and I would say that for the following reasons. I would say that concussion is a euphemistic term that allows us to think that we know, that, that allows us to have faith that the consequences of a traumatic brain injury are transient, when in fact, we do not know if they will be transient or not. The, uh, it, it also allows us to put this into a category, and as long as there are not any observable signs, we can say, oh, well, the, this will get better. It's okay now to resume your activities. In point of fact, we don't really know. You are going to be faced for sure with people coming in, friends, patients, family members, who have had a traumatic brain injury. And they're going to want to know, when is it safe for my child to return to X activity? When is it safe for them to play football again? When is it safe for them to go running again? When is it safe for them to ride their bike again? And the, there is no real answer, in my opinion. Now, again, I could be wrong. And I think that there are plenty of people that disagree with me. But in my view, we don't understand this phenomenon. We don't f understand the phenomenology of head trauma, uh, of traumatic brain injury, and the ultimate consequences of that. Discussing this with, with uh, parents and with individuals who've, been a, uh, who've experienced a traumatic brain injury is something that you will have to find a way to do, find a way to give them some agency to make their choices in some kind of an informed way. This is not something I can tell you how to do, and I recommend having a lively discussion as to how to approach this, this, um, this task. In the next section, we're going to look at the blood-brain barrier. <music>